Welcome to Boots Your Life! That was not rehearsed. <laughs> That, All right, ladies and that gentlemen. That was more of a like. My husband is running late, and I need to get out some some stuff. Stuff. Okay. <laughs> okay. If you're just joining us, welcome. We are Kevin and Chrissy Comstock with the Family Food Story, and we are welcoming you to a make with us kombucha extravaganza. Extravaganza. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> so, um, I'm out I'm of breath. I ran up the stairs. I'm, I'm going to start by saying. If you have not downloaded the Bucha Live um, PDF, do so. Grab it. It has, well, it's got a list of what you needed, which it might be a little late for that. And then we've got kombucha instructions on here. We have two pages of second ferment recipes. And then this is what I'm excited about. So you, you said that you didn't say that very well. Two pages of second, second ferment. ferment. Recipes. recipes. <laughs> Not one page, but two, which means there's a lot. So. And then we have a bucha log. The front is for the bucha itself, and then this back is for second ferments, which I think is really cool because one thing we've been doing with our canning is going through and keeping track of what we've learned, how things work, how things don't work, when we have problems and all of that. And it's really, really helpful to have improvements into the future. So, so one of the things about these sheets is it's incredibly important to actually use them full transparency. <laughs> That's how my last canning experiment went. Um, <laughs> and I, I've learned that when you actually take the time to write things down, going back and experiencing that previous experience in your life is so incredibly helpful and to actually see what's going on and how things have gone and yeah. It's 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 super super helpful. Do you have your phone? No. Because otherwise we're not gonna be able to respond to any of these comments that I see I'll be right back. coming through. So okay, if you are making bucha with us, I'm going to encourage you to right now start boiling your water. And normally we just kind of do this by memory. I'm gonna actually follow the instructions that we wrote up because I want to make sure that we actually are doing what we told you to do. So we're going to start by bringing six cups of water to boil and then we're going to talk about what we're going to talk about and how the rest of this is going to go. So let's grab some water. I already got water over there. Oh you do? Is yeah. it, it's it's right in there. here? No, it's right there. Where? Oh. Right, right there. Hold okay. On. You talk to the people while I'll I talk to the people. Or move it. Jay Jarrett, hey y'all. Y'all, yep, there's a y'all in there. Hello, Kim Wells. Hello, so happy you made the live. We are too. Thank you so much. Steve says, Good morning. What's up, Steve? Kim Wells says, Please shout out to my husband, Craig. It's his birthday today. All right, happy everybody. Happy birthday, Craig! I totally ruined that, didn't I? Yeah. <laughs> so I was going to say something like, Happy, happy birthday from all of us to you. You look like a monkey and you act. No, I'm just kidding. All right, Greg, happy birthday. Uh, Rachel Klute says, hey, I made it with a big heart. Oh, hi, Rachel, I miss you. And Wild Mountain Rose says, good morning, good morning. Hope you were doing well. Our growing McFamily says, good morning. And Kylie says, good morning, good morning, good morning. Good morning. Um, okay, I've got two cups left, so I put six cups. We're gonna bring that to a boil. And it's going to take a little bit of time, so let's, oh, I know what I didn't bring. I didn't bring the giveaway stuff. I'll go grab that in a minute. Cool. First, let's go over what we're going to do today. Okay, so we did the welcome. Check. And we boiled the water. And now we're going to do the overview. So, so go ahead. first, we're going to do the giveaway. We're going to get that done with because otherwise I will forget. You know what's going to happen with our giveaway? We're going to lose half the people. So let's not do that yet. Okay. Like they're going to do the giveaway and then everybody's going to leave. No, I don't think that's no, I'm true. Kidding. I don't think that's true. And then we're going to talk about something really cool that we're going to be doing in the future. Yes. And then we're going to finish up making this kombucha 
And then we're gonna talk about something even cooler that we're doing in the future. Ooh. And then Hold on, there's more. we're going to be doing some second ferments. Yes. So we have a variety of stuff in here to put together the second ferments. So at least some of them that we shared in the Butch Alive PDF that you would have had to sign up for. Um, which you can still get. So, awesome. the giveaway. Giveaway. I've got I've got this all ready to go. I'll go get the giveaway. Okay, you go get the giveaway. So the way that we do our giveaway, we've got actually two. We've got two Bucha packages. The first is from the last Azure haul that we did. And what we do is for that you had to comment on the video. And so I just do a random number generator to tell me which number comment to um, to pick as the winner. And so I am going to generate, oh sweet, I don't have to count to nice. that high. I just have to count to 32. So you can show that stuff while I count to 32. Cool, all right, One. I'm going to oh, move this out of the way. gotta sort by. Oh, the dog sounds angry. Hi from Long Island, New York. New York. Oh man, we were just talking about all the places we wanted to live when we start going mobile. New York's on that list for a couple weeks at least. So, we have a kombucha starter kit from Urbucha. This has a tiny little scoby in here somewhere with some liquid. We have a cotton bag. We have some ginger juice because ginger kombucha It's amazing. It's amazing. It's amazing. Yes. We have some oolong tea. And for the primo, there's three bags of things in here. Are we sending two to somebody? One of them's for me. Oh. Okay, but I'm losing my track. One, two, three. And we have the kombucha book. We showed this in the last Azure hall. It's got a ton of really awesome recipes in here. Um, I haven't looked through this exactly page to page. Mango bucha, bucha vinegar, dressings and dunks, Long Island, just kidding. Um, citrus sunshine martini. So that makes me wonder, do they actually have, yeah, vodka, excellent. So I had a thought this morning while we were pre prepping for this on the second ferment that I was interested in. A jalapeno <gasps> kombucha. Bucha? Oh. Espace, espace. So we so, have some candied jalapeno juice that we were gonna make margaritas of, and one day we'll do that. But I'm thinking we should try the candied jalapeno juice in the kombucha. Second ferment, I think that'd be really good. Yeah. Now, we are going we to have to do a lot of experimenting with how much yeah, right? of that we get. Because I juice. bet you a little bit we'll is go gonna go a, a long, long way. way. Yeah. Um, okay, do you wanna take a second? I have a winner. Oh. I have a winner from oh. the comments. All right, winners. So. Are you ready? Karen Johns 8859, you win the first Bucha package. Congratulations. I'm going to send, that, you a, or send you a message right now. Is that the book, is that the book giveaway one? That's, that's everything. Thank that's you. everything? Yes. There's so, another book too. So is that? There's two of everything. Oh, there's two of them. Yes, cool. okay. Yeah. So, so I, know what, I know what's going on. Cool, cool, congratulations. Yay. You know, I was reading through the comments and I told Christy, I'm like, oh my gosh, there's so many people that want to do this. And we need more stuff to give away. <laughs> um, your... Red Lantern Homestead Kathy. Hi Kathy. Says New York in May or October is one of the most beautiful places in the world. I bet it I is that. because we're originally from Michigan. When did we go to New York? It was July. Remember Fourth of July? Oh yeah, Fourth of July. Yeah. My oh, my aunt and uncle live in New York. Um. Poughkeepsie. Yeah. To be exact. So we're from Michigan originally, and anything in May or October is really pretty. Before the mosquitoes and after the mosquitoes, and with all the color, July and August you don't want to go. Um, but uh, yeah, 
It's really, really, really pretty. Um, and then it says, hi from South Carolina. Looking forward to the teaching. Cool. Thanks, Sandra. Kevin, that sounds really, really good. I'm assuming you're talking about the jalapeno one. That, yeah, that's that's going to be gnarly. So, you know what? There's, we're going to talk about second ferments later, but I just, with the jalapeno, there's another one that sounds really good to me, and it's using bacon as a second ferment. We could do, like, a jalapeno and a bacon. bacon. I don't know what. We're gonna we can try mixing them together, but I think like side by side, sip a little bit of this and then a little bit of that might be really good. I saw somebody do a maple syrup one, so I could totally do a maple bacon. Yeah, for sure. Um, okay. Harvest this, says I could too. <laughs> this past week has been insane for us. I have not responded to any of the comments Sorry. here, and I I hope to get to them because I've read some of them and There's I just... There's some really awesome stuff going on that you guys have. And also, we have to genuinely and humbly say thank you for the support um, with just the comments and everything and the encouragement. Thank you. Um, so this one's easy. I have all of the email. So, okay, second giveaway is for everybody who actually signed up and got the PDF and... Um, signed up for the Bucha Live. And so I'm going to, I've got my random number generator. Oh, this one's gonna be really Kim cool. asks if the New York air still have issues. Ken says no. Kim says it's coming back today, but not as bad. Um, where is it's Karen? Well, that's not good. My husband is wanting to try the help you kind as he saw on the... <laughs> <laughs> um, I, this lady says, hi, miss you guys. I don't know who she is. <laughs> Hi, Ma. Half an hour. Mimi is in week. Michigan. We missed her. <laughs> Kim says, pray for those who get the fires under control. Yes. Okay. Um, and then, hold on, I got two more. Oh, yep. It says, hello yep. from Southwest Michigan. Love everything except the mosquitoes and the potholes. Yeah. And yeah. then, um, RWC says, so tired of spending money on single. I'm thinking that's his bottle. Need to make my own. Yes, yes you, you do. do. Not only, like, honestly, for me, it's not even, if Bucha in a bottle were super inexpensive, I would do so our own so because it own. tastes so much better. Cool. And, yeah, I, it's the way to go. All right. So, we have our winner number two, Darla Mankey. Congratulations. Mm, yay. I'm not going to send the email right now, but I will, if you're here, congrats. We're so happy for you. Um, this people, this right here, like if you're not doing second ferments, this is the easiest way to get gin. <laughs> yeah, that's the way to go. Is to do ginger bucha by just taking like a water boiling glug of this. What perfect timing! <laughs> and you instantly have ginger bucha without having to actually go through the process. All right, how much or how much tea? Do we put okay. inside of our boiling water? Here, these are our out. instructions. So we have six cups of water. Okay, you're going to bring it to a boil, you're going to remove it from the heat, and then you're going to add the sugar and stir until dissolved. Sugar. Where's the sugar? Oh. <laughs> and then you're going to add the tea and you're going to steep it for at least. I say it for 20 minutes on here. Oh darn, my sugar container oh, is empty. No. Harbor we go grab a bottle or a bag of sugar. Okay. That's Grayson. We get a chance to show, show you off. something that's cool. <laughs> yeah. Alright. I'm guessing, I'm guessing that some of the people here know they what know. we like to talk about yeah. a lot. We like to talk about things that make your life easier. Ha! Okay, so while, why don't you keep that boiling a little bit? Or you know what, we're just gonna add them both so you can yeah, add the tea next. That's what I, was gonna, I usually do tea first anyway. All okay, right, so it says eight servings of tea. And we use oolong tea. We'll talk a little bit more about that in a little bit. Um, it's my favorite to use. And so, it says eight, where did it go? It's eight servings. Sorry. The reason why it says eight servings is some people might be using tea bags. And I think that it's just easier to know eight tea bags. Now, I highly recommend not doing tea bags because it's way more expensive than just doing loose leaf tea. Loose leaf tea. 
But you know what? We've been buying this positively brand tea for a really long time. Can you pause for a second? Yeah. How much tea should go in there? Because I usually do three cups for three gallons. You do one cup of, like, no, like half a cup? cup. Ha no. Half a cup? Yes, a half cup is good. Half a cup, go in. A half cup is more than enough. But so, <laughs> what it actually would be is about 12 teaspoons. So it's actually only four tablespoons. So it's actually a quarter, a quarter cup, cup that goes into the gallon. Well, we like our stuff strong. Food is strong. And so, yeah. but listen. Listen. Azure, a little while back, started selling wild rose, no, mountain rose. Mountain, mountain rose herbs. And they have their tea. And they have an oolong tea. And it is in bulk now. So they have the one pound of organic tea that we're going to be getting in this next order. I'm excited for it. So yes, we store our food storage. We store our food storage? We store our food storage in bags that fit in our working pantry. This is not the best example because this holds more than that, but we don't ever want more than a gallon to deal with at a time. And then the sugar gets reused because it doesn't get spilled. Now. We did a video some time ago about what size mylar bag should you use and how many oxygen absorbers and all that. If you have not seen that, go check it out. But this has been a lifesaver. Everything that we have stored in anything, it's in the size bag. So if this ginger runs out, we go grab a bag exactly like that. Fill it up. Oh. And a lot of you have been asking about where these labels came from. Come here, you. <laughs> I made them. Well, Mom helped a lot. They're vinyl labels. I taught her how to do it, and she totally took off and did it all on her own. And Mimi helped label some of them, too. Yes. One so. cup of sugar going in the pot. Is that the one cup? It's half cup. Okay, so we need two half cups. Can you, can you, can you want to, we don't need, we're not even showing what's going on over here. Here, you got it? Time to go mobile. <laughs> I'm going to get rid of my computer so that nothing right. bad happens to it. Sugar in. Boop. It's, um, yeah. Here. Yeah, <laughs> okay, show you the pantry here real quick. Cabinet. Oh, the spice cabinet. cabinet. The spice cabinet. All right, wooden spoon. Stir. Well, it doesn't need to be. It can be metal. I use the wooden spoon. All right, sing the stir in Song Harbor. I don't know rubble, double, sing. Rubble, double, extra trouble. No. <laughs> stir the culture, watch it bubble. You can do that. Let's let's show off Jolene. Grayson is carrying Jolene this morning. It's funny. All the kids are always fighting. I want to hold her. I want to hold her. I want to hold her. So. Yes, you're on a tripod. Okay. All right, sugar's going to go Get back the inside the working Okay, pitch. so if you're making bucha with this, I'm hoping that your water is boiling. I think, I think water boils. Uh, faster Does it boil? Here. It boils faster it, here? It, yes. Yes. Because because I, because, usually, I, because I said so. I can't remember. I can't remember the signs. Hey, that, I have but. a question. Who watching is actually making kombucha with us? Yes, that's let, a let good, us really know good in the question. comments below. Okay. I'll be honest. If it were me, I probably wouldn't. I know you wouldn't. I totally wouldn't because <laughs> I'd be watching. I'd watch and then I'd be like, I'm gonna go do it afterwards. So. But uh, the whole point is, we want to encourage you to actually do this. RWC asks, is the loose tea in an infuser or directly in the pot of boiling water? Directly in the pot. So, I'm trying to think. I used to do, um, I used to use a French press when I was only doing a couple jars of oh. bucha, like a long time ago. Isn't that French press up there? No, Kevin has broken two of them. Because it's not, made out of, have to, it's not made out of cast iron. So, anyway. Everything in my life has to be cast iron. <laughs> or steel. Um, 
so since then, when we started increasing the amount of bucha, and normally we do 12 gallons at a time. At some point in the near future, we are going to share our process for doing 12 gallons at a time, but I don't think that's totally applicable to most people. Even large families don't necessarily do 12 gallons at a time. So we're just going to do one gallon here and now. Um, but for that reason, we just throw it all in and then we strain it using a strainer. Okay. Yeah, do you comment? Yeah. Um, Yeah, figure out how to get rid of this thing. Get rid of this thing. <laughs> Come on, babe. Um, Kylie says, I'm watching first and then going to redo it. Yeah. So she can see it, understand. And Kathy says, Me too. Stephanie says, Haha, I'm cleaning windows. Got a full jar of kombucha behind me. Yogurt straining and bread rising. Go wow. get it, girl. That's awesome. That's a Friday. Um, Good job. Catherine says, I would hate to start and not have everything I need, so I'll watch first. <laughs> That's something That's I would funny. do. Come on. Um, Come on. There's, there, there's another one in here I thought I saw. Right there, Red Lantern Homestead. No, there's another one. Okay, you can keep going. We're so, good. Some, someone asked a question that I thought oh, I saw. Um, I, 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 we no, apologize I, for anybody's comment who gets missed. It's hard when they're coming in and it's not like, I don't know, you can't check them off or anything as you go. So. Ah, there it is. Okay. Um, hi from NC, North Carolina. Yes. Albert Banks. Okay. Uh, we've been making kombucha for a bit now. My kids love it, but haven't made the second ferments. Well, you just stick around because we got something special for you. Now, if you can get your kids to like it plain, they're going to just... <laughs> Gobble up the second from us. Sure. What are you looking I'm right at? here. <laughs> Maybe. I'm watching it goes. <laughs> okay, so. Okay, so first off, we have something really cool to invite everyone to. And this is something that I wish I would have thought of or come across when we first started uh -huh. making kombucha because it really would have kind of pushed me in a fun way to learn what I didn't know. Yeah. And so what it is, what is it is a bucha challenge for everyone. There is a link down below and when you sign up, you're going to get the sheet. And what it is, is it is not just 25, but 50 different second ferment recipes. And what the challenge is, is to try them all out. There's even one on here with banana. Uh, <laughs> there's a banana. I figured we made dog treats the other day that had banana in them, and I tried a little taste. So I'm like, if I can taste that, then I'll be able to taste the banana brucha, I suppose. But so it, we, it stands we, out too because I put, <laughs> I put I put an emoji on here. Something the light goes like. <laughs> So here, here's the thing, Chris and I love like 98.5% the same things. So there's a couple things that we don't. Those are like most foods. Like, like books, uh, weather, food, okay. tea, drinks, banana, I love. <laughs> she cannot, it's detestable to her. As long as there's enough sugar, I like banana bread. <laughs> banana bread, yeah. Okay, anyway, food to challenge. Here's the deal. Get the sheet and start working on this because what we're going to do is we are going to have a race. The first person to try out all 50 Bucha recipes. Now, you have to actually try it. I want you to put the date that you tried it. I want you to rate it kind of as a family or yourself. Maybe you have like a family sheet and a personal sheet or something. <laughs> and then there's like tasting notes on the side. So you have to actually do it, and then you hand this in, you send this to us, and you win a $100 gift card to Azure Standard, because we love Azure Standard, if you didn't know. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm super, super excited. Mm -hmm. And the cool part is that we've got 12 gallons of bucha <laughs> for every two weeks. 
So yes. fifty is going to be we, easy to catch. <laughs> so we should. But we, we should be able to get. But we we're, don't we're, have. We're, we're not. We're not counting. <laughs> but so. we will be sharing our journey and how like everything's going. Yep. On social media, probably either both the YouTube community and I think we're going to set up a separate Instagram page yeah. just for a family food program. Because otherwise, our personal Instagram pages are going to get like Inundated totally with... overloaded with Bucha stuff. Right. <laughs> but then maybe at least I'll use it because I'm really bad about yeah. Instagram. Yeah. So sign up for the Bucha challenge. You don't have to do it right the second, but when you're done watching, it's in the description of the video. And share this. This is free. Everyone can participate. I'm super excited to hear how it inspires people to try out different second ferments because i just when we Why started not? making well no when we started making bucha number one it just sounded like extra work it sounded intimidating and i was coming from the stance that i love bucha just plain and we actually brew ours a little bit longer we never like we usually go to that 14 day mark Sometimes three months. Sometimes three months. And we still drink it. Like, drinking vinegar, not a problem. <laughs> and so, but, oh boy. since we've started experimenting with the second ferments, it's like a whole new world. And you're totally missing out. You need to say it now. <laughs> no. <laughs> Good. <laughs> I will dance on camera. I will not sing on camera. Thank you. <laughs> <clears throat> I'll warm up the vocals. <laughs> So, Bucha Challenge, do it, for sure. All right, so, Kylie says, I remember you praising the cherry almond flavor. I'm happy that you included that in the bundle. That's the one I want to try. Um, yes, that's awesome. And Kathy says, wow, I would never get that many done. I'm, only, I'm the only kombucha drinker here. Really fun to see everyone's progress, though. And the keeper of the memory says, I love the challenge idea. I'm in a rut lately. Lots of times I don't even second ferment. Well, guess what? <laughs> now you have to We just a gave you to. a four wheel drive boost. Okay. Now, I do need to mention, and it says on here, each of these, so I want to I want to show it really close. So it does have the recipe for each one along with what it is. And this specifically is for a 32 ounce bottle. So it's for this size, which is 32 cork. ounces. And yeah, so, um, you can do smaller amounts. If it's just you, if it's just a couple of you that are trying it, you might not want to do a whole bottle. Cut it in half, cut it in a, in quarter. a quarter, whatever, yeah. and do what works for you. Because, so I mean, even if you made a gallon of bucha, if you did, I think, 16 ounce bottles, I think that there it does like 12 I have no idea. Okay. That doesn't make sense. No, it doesn't. Because 32, Maybe it's 16. eight ounce bottles that I'm thinking. So you like, do an eight ounce bottle. And well, you don't necessarily have to do this. You can do a pint. No, well, no, no, no. So we'll talk about that later. Okay. <laughs> You're going to ruin it. Okay. So, okay. What's next? Strain tea? Where are we at? How, how we're, long we're, has it been? Have we set we, a timer? We are getting close to 30 minutes. Right? Like, no, no, no. How long minutes. has the tea been? We did not set a time. Steeping. Does anyone know? <laughs> we've been steeping. We've been steeping it this long. Okay, let's. Okay, let's do this. I have. Oh, I somebody, somebody mentioned. A list of. Wait, wait. What? No. Does it go in? Right there. Right there. So I wonder if you can see the time. No, you can't see the time. Oh, you're in time. Yeah, for you. <laughs> okay, let's just take let's take five more minutes. Okay. I think that's plenty. Okay. But okay, we can go. We're on. gonna take five more minutes. I have a whole list of FAQs and topics that we can cover, all about bucha. And so we we will prioritize your individual comments. So feel free to send them in. Um, but. I want to just, this is just to kind of make sure that we kind of cover a wide angle of bucha topics. Cool. So, number one. Number one. What type of tea should I use? Most people will tell you black tea. 
I we've done I've done black tea a few times. I don't love it. And most of the um I believe most of the commercial brewers use black tea. I personally love oolong tea. Oolong tea is like in a class of its own. It is not a type of black tea. It's not a type of green tea. It's like oolong. It's oolong tea. Um, and it's amazing. Black tea works great. I mm -hmm. like that's yeah. If, if I, I don't even know what the taste difference would be. We should do a side by side. Do a small batch just side by side to see. At um, some point, yeah, we should. Because straight oolong tea, I <laughs> I bet you we'd like like okay. just to make it. Okay. Because I love black tea. Yeah. And yeah. Um. Yeah. The difference, I think that honestly, the in my opinion, the oolong tea is a little bit more subtle than the black tea, and you taste more of the actual fermentation than you do the tea. Okay. That's kind of my different differentiation between oolong and black tea. So the the other option would be green tea, and the issue we've experienced or heard with green tea is sometimes the lack of caffeine could be an issue. And that's interesting because RWC says, I've been using decaffeinated black tea because you can't do caffeine. So I think that's going to debunk the caffeine, the caffeine issue. I don't think it's the caffeine. No? I think that it's just, I think that the green tea is different. I think that it, I don't know the science behind it, but I know that it is different. And it's my understanding that if you are starting Bucha, that you do not want to start with green tea. But it is something that you can eventually do and transition to. I don't know. Does anybody out there use strictly green tea? And if so, how long have you gone for? And I'm sorry. The kids are setting up the pool outside. In 50 degree weather. In 50 degree weather. Yeah, it's cold here. And apparently they're spraying each other. It's kind of just yelling at them. The, the weather here in Colorado for the last... Two months has been incredible. We have not hit 80 degrees. I think we've hit 70 once or twice, and it has rained almost every single day. And last night, we found or saw like swarms of mosquitoes. We normally get, don't have any mosquitoes here. Oh, oh, one year we did. Since we moved here, we moved here. The year we moved here. Bless you. Okay. okay, but also, with the tea, you want to make sure that it is not a flavored tea. If it is flavored, it can ruin your scoby. Okay. It might not ruin it the first round, or maybe not even the second round, but don't use flavored tea. On the count of three, we're going to say hi, Nanny Sue. One, two, three. Hi, hi Nanny, Nanny Sue! Sue! Okay. <laughs> uh, yeah, over the rain here in Springs. In the springs. Oh, you're in the springs. Hi, our growing McFamily. Cool. Awesome. Local. Awesome. Love it. Yeah, you guys got pounded earlier this week. Uh, somebody said the they closed Fort Carson because it was just like I think it was Fort Carson, the ones on the east side. Um, hail. Like, crazy. We have not seen any hail yet. Little. There's been like there was like yeah. one storm. There were teeny tiny things. Yeah. Cool. Okay. Cool. Why aren't you part of our Azure drop? Yeah, right? Come on, you get some you get some snacks and stuff up here. Okay. Okay, that oh that's still the same question. My, okay, so keeper of the mercy is my favorite is Darjeeling. Darjeeling? Darjeeling? Tea? Yes. For kombucha, sometimes I do half green, half Darji. So our growing family just just signed up. <laughs> okay. That's funny. I didn't mean a peer pressure you or anything. <laughs> Hopefully we can meet you in a couple weeks when the, when the order comes. Unless your order just came. Yeah, yeah, our order closed yes, last week. Do you know when it's coming? No, we'll find out today. I know, that's why okay. I asked. Okay, five minutes is up. Let's strain the tea. Okay, straining the tea. Oh, wait, daughter. I'm moving. Move that well, thing. all right, hold on. Grayson, can you make sure that we can see this? So we use a Pyrex and just a... Strainer. Strainer. Okay. Yep, yep, that way. Oh, stop moving. All right. I don't like pouring hot things towards you, so I'm sorry in advance. What was that cracking noise? I think it was Grace's toes. It was oh. this. That's it. Wait, stop. 
I hear lots of screaming outside. Well, what happens when you give them water? Okay, okay. now, Grayson, grab the jar. Or we got a pile of comments. Harvard, grab the jar, please. Which one, were these one? No, jar, like gallon jar. All right, so, um, yeah. just signed up, keep the members. I wonder no, if there would be any difference with oolong teas, if it tasted very earthy last time I tried it. I don't know. There are different oolong teas. There are, we really, we really like this, this one. This is the one. The one. one. But I also believe we're gonna do, I guess, you know what, we're giving away the Mountain Rose and we haven't even tried it yet. I feel bad. So. I was, hope that it's so good. Hi, Rosalinda. <laughs> I hope you're doing good. Um, she says they use honey instead of sugar, which is interesting. I'm curious what that would do. You, so. The one thing is that honey, I feel like, is um, super fun. special, medicinally speaking. So I'd rather use the honey for medicinal purposes as opposed to fermenting. Because you're feeding. Because you're feeding something the that's ferment. bacterial. And you're not necessarily something. consuming it. Yeah. Now, that's where, let's talk about sugar for a minute. So I've gotten, I get lots of questions of, can you avoid the sugar? Like, can you not use it? And the answer to that is absolutely not. The way that the SCOBY thrives is by feeding off of the sugar. The only way for it to like convert into a ferment is by, by feeding, feeding it yeah. off of something. So you cannot go sugar free. Can you use substitutes? Yes, but. Can you, can you go it the is, the grills and stuff? You stay no and now here comes the rain to help fill the pool because we're supposed yeah. to get an rain. inch of rain today. Inch o rain. Okay, but number two, the the can you substitute? It is my understanding that people do find success with substituting sometimes. Sometimes. And so that's something where I say experiment. If you feel like you do not want to use sugar, then go ahead and experiment with coconut oh. sugar or honey. Or don't use like the um, erythritol or stevia or stuff like that. If that will not, I don't think that'll work. Cool. But there's other, like, I think you, some people try molasses. There's different things that you can do. Um, but it is my understanding that sugar or we use the evaporated cane juice is the best, not necessarily, let me not say the best, well, the it, easiest way to get good results. Well, and the thing is that it's, it's, a, it's a skew that we already are working with because we're using it for kefir and we're using it for ginger bugs and things like that. And it's a fairly economical um, feeding device. Yes. <laughs> so um, McFamily says, the CSF order. Yay. Um, and then Rosalina says it's for June green tea kombucha. Okay, interesting. And then Stephanie says that she heard that the honey can kill the scoby. I've heard that as well. So that's interesting. I've never heard like, interesting. interesting. Yep, cool. All right, so let's get back to kombucha making. Tea is strained, it is cooling remarkably fast. So um, it's probably because it's cold outside. This is good. Yeah, I it's warmed warm. it up. So I made some chicken broth and I broke a half gallon jar this morning because I poured hot chicken broth into a cold, cold jar. Because you have the jars all Oh, open. that's why somebody came and was like, Mom. Dad broke a jar. Dad broke one of your and jars. I, your breath and I can't remember who it was. I can't get away with anything in this house. <laughs> right, take that. Now, I will also say this. If you want, if you have, like, for whatever reason, if you have a smaller pot or you're short on time and you need to make it super fast, you can do even less than the six cups. I just personally think that it's easier to get that sugar to dissolve when you have the six cups. So, but when we make kefir in a half gallon jar, I put as little as like a cup of water in there and then a half a cup of sugar. You just have to make sure yeah, that it's not, it dissolves very quickly. It's not, it's not bad. Okay, so the next thing is to cool it off with just filtered water. So, Grayson, you grab us a jar of water. It's okay. There's one other thing, dude, right there. Up on the tray. On the tray. I'm turning this a little. Oh no, earthquake. <laughs> okay. No, no, put it down. Put it down. So, 
Since this is warm, it can't. If it's too warm, it can kill the scoby. So you want to cool it off. Could I put on a show in the basement? Yes. Now at this point, you want to make sure that you leave room in your jar because whether you're starting from scratch or you're m making your next batch, you need enough to put the scoby in along with at least a cup of already fermented kombucha. Now, one thing that I have found over and over and over again, a lot of people use two, two cups of kombucha per gallon. Right. I am going to say that I wholeheartedly disagree with that strategy. Simply because so if we were to do it, we would lose 12 cups of bucha you, every two you check weeks. check the front, so make sure it's closed in the front. Yeah, look good. at this. It's like a That's an old genuine jar. sculpted yeah. glass. Nice. Okay, so um, we have our out. brewing kombucha. I'm going to turn this. And we've been brewing kombucha for, I'm thinking like 11 or 12 years. And same scoby. I've always used, I've always used one cup. And I've never had a problem with it. Okay. So we have already brewed kombucha here. And we're going to take this a beautiful scoby. And Kevin obviously washed his hands. Yes, he it was it was really clean, clean hands. So you can see, check this out. Grayson, can you follow me with this cup? No, follow me with this cup. So we have a little baby growing there. And that's a scoby that grew on top of that one. Whoa, yeah. Yep. So there's like three sco four scobies just in this guy right here. Now, if you need additional scobies, that's all that needs to go in there. Is that one thing? One scoby. But I'm gonna put the rest in. But mm -hmm. if you like your kombucha a little bit extra fermented and you want to speed up the process you can throw a couple more scobies in and it will make it go faster no, i can't okay. this is really annoying having to so here i think everyone heard that <laughs> <laughs> just raise it up just raise like right no, well, no careful careful just can't do that look at the okay no. that's fine well it's fine it's fine okay just stay you just stay down there so we have the tea, we have the scoby, and now we have already brewed kombucha, which I'm going to pour out of here. No, 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 no. This has been sitting for a few Oh, you're weeks. right. I got so, it. Okay, so listen, what we want to do here is you want to stir this up first before you pour it in. Because <laughs> what happens is that the yeast settles at the bottom. And so the, the consistency of the liquid up here is going to be very different than the consistency down here. And you can see look, look that. what happened. Oh. We also have some carbonation. A lot of carbonation. Look, oh. it's going to overflow. Okay. <laughs> Whoever tells you that you have to use a swing top bottle to get carbonation is lying. This was not even sealed. So... So we're going to grab one cup out of this. You can get a little bit more. You're being stingy Did with you? the bucha. Yes. And we're going to pour this in. And then top it off if need be, but I'm going to call that good. I think it's good. Cool. So next thing you want, have a breathable top that goes going to go on top. Any of that. But it can't be metal. It can't be metal. All right, Elias here. Baby kitten says the, hi. I can have the baby kitten. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Who was it? What, Hair tie. Who are the people that are man. down in the springs? McFamily. Anyone local, including you, McFamily, if you want kittens or a kitten or multiple kittens, Look at this little we have some that are adorable that are available. Look at that. Dad, am yeah, I allowed to have some dried fruit? Ashley has a bunch. Let's, let's, let's get out of the way for a minute. Well, it's like, not good. Nope. Did I? What do you want? So, some dried fruit. Ashley has some. Nope, not, you guys talk to Ashley. We're not getting any more of it. This is going to go in a warm place. I believe that the warm place is one of the most important aspects in brewing bucha. We 
I, I brewed bucha. I took this. I took our original. I don't know. It's not the original, obviously, but like I never stopped my continual batch. So I said from house to house to house, and the last house that we were in, I went to make. I started making the bucha, and it would not work. Yeah. And I was devastated. And so I ditched all my scobies, I got new ones, and it would not work. And I finally realized that the temperature of the room where I was trying to ferment it, it was too cold. And I never thought about it before because I just, I never had a problem with it. And so we, the way that you solve this is you get a heat map. Um, the, and it's just like a garden heat map. You can get them on Amazon. It doesn't matter what it is. And you can put, like, you can get little sticky thermometers to put on the side of your jar to keep track of what temperature it's at. Ideally in that, like, it's ideal to have it in that, like, the 70s for it to ferment properly. So we, when we came to this house, we have a metal rack where the heat mat would sit on top of. Mm -hmm. And we would put it up there. Well, one thing that we noticed was that, that, well, the heat map makes a big difference, obviously, but something else that's kind of interesting, well, here, I've got two topics I want to cover and I'm not sure where to go first. So first off, your laundry room is a great place to brew your kombucha because it is, it's the warmest place in our house. And so we put it up on top of the cabinets in the laundry room and since we've done that i served from reporting they want to see it <laughs> walk and talk okay time to go mobile again the dehydrator is running so in here so it is well it is probably like 80 degrees it's in here. look i can show you it is 78 degrees in here yeah okay so can can you see what they can see? Nope, here, I got it. Okay. You talk. So our bucha sits up there and it's the other part about it that's really good is that it doesn't um it doesn't get moved. And when it was on the rack, it got jostled. And you really want the kombucha to sit and be still and you don't want to jostle it around. I think I hear Julie. Yes. So she's gonna go get her. And so, keep it warm. It will ferment faster. So, dependent on your taste, on how you like things to ferment, that's going to really kind of play a big part in it. But we like ours to really ferment it. Let's talk about something really quick. Somebody mentioned that they love all of how organized our family is, and I want to show you how amazing my wife is. Oh, cool. this is not that organized right now. But, if you want to see what it's like to have batteries organized. Oh yeah, how cool. It's not like it. Yeah. And then move your body. And then there's a laundry schedule. So there's no question <laughs> on whose laundry day it is, whose responsibility it is, or any of that. Okay, I just had to brag on my wife for a minute. She's awesome. Okay, so this will go up there. Another day, probably tomorrow, we're gonna make the remaining 11 gallons that we have to make. Jolene is here to say hi. She's a little upset right now. She just woke up. Oh. And she's on the right, this one. Will you check and see if she, she just like, changed her? Oh, perfect. three Three months goes by so fast. So we have a- You do that, let me, I'm gonna get her. Okay. Oh. So, um, Patty says, I love your family and organization in halls. Can the tea be caffeinated? First off, thank you, Patty. We just talked about the decaf tea and if it can or cannot be decaffeinated. I'm gonna look it up. I, I've got a book over there that we can look through. Yeah, well I don't think it's just, I, I think there's so many factors that's involved. You know, the brewing condition type of tea, mm -hmm. steeping and all of those things, how good your scoby is to begin with, what the kombucha is like. I think all of those are gonna be contributing factors so I can't say for sure whether or not it is or isn't gonna work. Test and find out. Um, do you have a continuous brew? Wait, no, she says, my scope oh. came in the dehydrator with instructions for a six week growth. Interesting. Um, I can talk about that. I can also talk about the continuous brew. Yep. No, we've never had a continuous brew. 
Don't say any more than that. <laughs> and then Beth says, I've done, a, I've done, I've made three batches with my first scoby and it hasn't grown. What am I doing wrong? Um, sugar, temperature, metal exposure. Metal exposure. Oh yeah, that's the other. That's the second thing that I wanted to cover. Um, what, okay, but here, look at this. I want to talk about. I want to talk some. about metal exposure for a minute. Yeah, we'll, Can we'll I? Do, yeah, go for it. Jump in. Yep. Okay. So there are some people that will say metal is awful. There's some people who will say it's not as big of a deal. When you're like when you're making the tea, like we strain the tea and the sugar, that hasn't that touched any of the ferments or anything, so it's totally okay. We're talking specifically about contact with the scoby and contact with the kombucha. What I will say, there's there's some people who say, you know, if it's for a second, if you use a metal spoon to stir it, it's okay, it's not gonna ruin it. We also will use metal, we will use the like just traditional ball canning lids to um, in yes to store it. And it has store a store the store. But, but but listen, here's the thing: we don't store all of our kombucha in the refrigerator after it's been bottled because. Say bye, Annie. Bye, bye Annie. Bye, Annie. Bye, Annie Sue. <gasps> because we just don't have space, and since we don't mind it continuing to ferment, but. Look, this this kombucha okay. has been stored. It has a metal lid on it, and there is a scoby that has formed in there in a two weeks. So, but I will say the jars that have plastic lids, the scoby is bigger. I will also say that this is the one that really kind of was insane to me, is that. I mentioned that we have our bucha on a metal rack. The bucha that sits in a glass jar on a metal rack versus not. The metal slows down the growth and the fermentation process, even though there's not any contact with the liquid itself, just the glass jar sitting on it. Isn't that crazy? Even if we sounds like some sort of woo energy thing. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder if there's like a uh, static, like if it's electricity, I or don't if it's know what it is. Um, like an alkalinity thing, if it's a deionization process, like when you touch a fork to tin foil and then you taste it, it tastes like metal. I don't know, but don't it's know. like it's through the glass. It's through the glass. It's crazy. Well, yes. but then, well, think about it this way. When you have muscle testing done, it's through a glass jar. Yep. And, and it this works. Is living, this is a living organism. Yep. So maybe maybe it's a heavy metal that it doesn't like. I don't know. You can get into some really weird stuff. Right now, we're not even getting weird about so, it. So I'm going to say metal will not absolutely destroy it, but just try to avoid it. Try avoiding it if you can. And if you accidentally stir your kombucha with a metal spoon, don't worry about it. I mean, it's not, it's not the end of the world. It's not going to destroy it. I'll remember that next time I use a metal spoon and you threatened to beat me. So who mentioned <laughs> that they who mentioned that they were having a problem with their kombucha that it wasn't growing? Beth. I Beth. think yeah, hang on. Um, yep, Beth. Beth, if you're still here, I wanna know what temperature the room was and if you were doing anything different in the process in comparison to what we just talked she about. She just explained what she does. She okay. no metal, been careful with that. I wonder I, if I've just not let it fermented long enough. 10 days, average temperature around 72. So I would try and up the temperature. I think that that... That seven, like 75 to 80? Especially... Light. Does light have anything to do with it? I've never had a problem with light. I mean, we've been doing it for a long time and it's never... It's always been out. Like out It is out. raining. <laughs> Yep. Are the kids still outside? No. no. They came They're back. in the basement. Okay. Okay. Um, oh, okay. So Beth also says meow is on cue. How cute. Yeah. <laughs> Mount, Wild Mountain Rose says I struggle with temp. Too cold in the winter. Too hot in the summer. I know. Um, so in the summer, the too hot, I guess it depends on how hot, but if it's, if it's 
getting moldy, then that's no, that's no good. But you can put it in a cooler place of your house and just not ferment it as long. Cool. And then, uh, let's see. Thank you for explaining the kombucha because it's a thin line between kombucha and wine. I do not like wine, so I stopped making kombucha. Interesting. Bethel says, I love art bins. I have dozens and dozens in their cubes to hold my hobby stuff. Cool. She says, it's on a wood shelf. Very stable. Laundry room. No windows. I don't know. Where did you get your starter from? And are you doing at least a cup of the a cup of kombucha along with the scoby? Kathy says, nailed it. Everything has energy. <laughs> yep. <laughs> That's funny. Okay. Now are we, are we We're good. We're caught up. Okay, let's talk about how long it will last. If you put it in the refrigerator. I am going to say six months to a year. Yeah, easily. As long as like it, it will slow down the process a little. It'll slow down the process a lot, but it will continue to ferment a little bit, and so you will be getting closer to that vinegar taste with as time goes on. Mm -hmm. And in my book, that's okay. Yeah. But we've we've drank it. At least, I mean. We drink it way three, four, five. Right months, now, four. all the kids are into it. Everybody loves it, and so we can't even. The twelve gallons isn't even lasting us two weeks. Yeah. So that's a problem. But we may need to bump it up to fourteen. Um, if you leave it on, if you leave it out, all that's going to happen is this scoby in here is going to grow and grow and grow and grow and grow. We should do an experiment and just I remember them. we did, we had some. We had one that was We like, had some that was, one grew, that was like half the jar. Yeah, it grew all the way down. So it's to, not gonna go bad as, um, as long as there's the, no mold. As long as there's no mold, you're, you're good. Now, it's sometimes people look at the scoby and they're like, Ew. That looks gross. Well, you know <laughs> what? You, you can pick, run your finger over it and feel it to make sure it's not like fuzzy. Fuzzy. Yeah. That. It, yeah. It's just like the slimy. It feels like the scoby. Then it's just the scoby. Yep. Um, another another thing is if you want to take a break, if you've been brewing kombucha and you're going on vacation or you just need a break, there's a couple different ways that you can do it. Number one is you can just leave it. Yeah, take our it and let it sit. Like you can put more scobies in a jar and just let them continue to feed off of what's in there. Um, you can also throw your scobies in the refrigerator. Some people advise against this, but we've done it and not had any problem. I've thrown scobies in the refriger refrigerator for months and then handed them out to people and they've had no problem. And I've done it myself, taken a break and then restarted and it works just fine. Um, what else? Is it safe? <laughs> so we've been doing this, like I said, for 12 to, I think 12 ish years. And I have, we, the kids have all drank kombucha. Breslin started drinking kombucha when she was a Bobby. baby, bitty baby. Yeah, like, I don't think she was one yet. I need to find that video when I think there, No, she. I think she was like just a few months old. No. When she was sitting. When no. she was sitting in the bumbo. No. 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 She was She was close to a year. Close to a year. Because she didn't start having any food until she was close to a year. Um, but I've, I have drank it through all of my pregnancies, um, breastfeeding, all of that. And it's never, it's never been a problem. The... Honestly, like, I'm not even, this, the SCOBY is like, it's a solid beast, and it does what it's supposed to, and it, it makes the drink what it's supposed to be, where a lot of people, I'm going to say, you should wash your hands before you get your SCOBY, because you can contaminate it, but... I know for a fact that when we have kids making bucha and Kevin making bucha, hey. that a lot of times there's hands that don't get washed. 
And I'm not worried about it because I like I've never I've never seen anything go bad with it. So, what is a scoby? How are we gonna take this? Yeah, a scoby is a symbiotic culture or colony of bacteria and yeast. Very good. I've memorized. <laughs> and it looks funny. <laughs> um, what, 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 what do we say it looks like? Uh, jellyfish. Sometimes it looks yes, like a it jellyfish. Does look like jellyfish. Um, what type of water? So, some, okay, you don't ever want to use chlorinated water. If you are on city water and it's chlorinated, you're going to want to either use a Berkey with a chlorinating filter on it or buy, so and I don't even know, so the thing that concerns me about like distilled water is that it's um like there's nothing in it and i feel like i feel like the bucha does better when it does have some of that mineral that is the, some of the minerals that are in there it's got some grit in it so but you don't want to use like bottled water because it's my understanding that bottled water has chlorine in it so my number one thought is we do have a well water Oftentimes it will. Do you use just the well water? He uses both sometimes. That's one yeah, time, sometimes. There's one time, like when we made it, mm -hmm. when she was born, we used it because we were almost out of first water, and then dad used it because we didn't have any Berkey water. Okay. So, so we used it. Usually we stock up and we use the Berkey water, but we, you can just use straight well water. Um. We talked about the sugar and the sugar alternatives. How do you know when it's ready? This is totally a personal taste sort of thing. And if you're if you don't if your family doesn't love fermented foods yet, I'm going to encourage you to maybe just brew it for that week. I would start, like, you can start tasting it at day five and see what it tastes like. One of the easiest ways to do so is to take a straw and put it in there and just kind of take a sip. Or you can just pour a little bit, but depending on how you're doing that. You might get a chunk of scoby. Yeah. Pull it out of your teeth. But if you just taste it once a day and get an idea of what your family likes and then know that's when it's going to be done and if you like it less fermented then you get more bucha than we do because it's more it takes us two full weeks quicker brew time yeah so um and then how to make kombucha busy shake it as you saw <laughs> we did nothing we did just nothing and it's it's it does naturally build up a bit of carbonation in it um, if you're, if you're just starting out, that's not going to happen on your first batch. I don't think because the scobies that they give you are generally smaller. So the way that you can actually like actively participate in getting more carbonation to build up is using the flip top bottles like this. Here, wait, I want to see. Any sealed bottle will work. Like you can use... You can reuse the kombucha bottles that you buy at the store because they're glass and you can just reuse those. So here we did one with kombucha. Or you can get some of these and I think that these work the best for the carbonation. Mm -hmm. So let's, let's, let's do a test. So this is one, this is a batch that we made two weeks ago. So we just took some, and two days ago we put it in the flip top bottle. It's Show all, that scoby it's just already, for two days. In two days, and we put it in the fridge yesterday. Yesterday, yeah. Should I pop it? Yep. Like, well, well, like, like. Babe, move your phone. Just eh. let's. I don't want to do it. Three. Then you do it. Oh it I goodness. don't think. I don't think I don't it's think gonna, it's gonna be anything. I think. It's, yeah. yeah, it's fine. It's fine. Well, this one might. There, yeah, I think it's fine. And the reason, okay, oh, one yeah. thing that you can do to save yourself from a, an explosion is refrigerate your bottles before you open them. These actually did not even get burnt. 
and I'm learning that cold, cold liquids actually hold on to the carbonation, and so it makes it have a less of a tendency to explode. Where if we would have opened these before they went in the refrigerator, it's very possible that they would. Look at that, that's already got this. I'm getting back. <laughs> okay, so don't, don't, don't. We'll, we'll talk more about this later, but this is ginger beer. And great. So show, show the, like, you, you, yeah, there. So it's got the ginger stuff separation. This is a brew date from the 15th. Oh, so this is yesterday. Okay, so this is not even an old one. Oh. So this was already burped. Today. Today. Okay. Do I'm that was crazy. <laughs> um, so we've had... Explosion. We've had stuff explode and going all the way up to the ceiling. It's not a super voltage. Yeah, it's still. Yeah, it's still. It's, it's, there's, there's, there's still kombucha and ginger beer and stuff in other locations. Um, so yeah, hope that answers that that question. We did have one question here from uh, from Patty. She's the first time watcher new to the channel. Welcome. Welcome. And she's I'm very hesitant to make this because I'm afraid I'll get overrun like my. Sourdough starter. Can I brew a half a gallon? And, can I brew a half gallon? And can she second ferment? Can she second ferment with ginger for the ginger ale taste? Yes. Yes and yes. But I am going to encourage you. The thing oh, with the kombucha, if you do a half a gallon, yeah. If you do a half a gallon, you have to. Remember that number one, you're taking at least it would be a half cup out of it, plus the SCOBY space, and so you're not even getting a full half gallon. And dependent on how fermented you like it, it's only going to give you like a half gallon every week to 10 days. And so that's kind of if you're if you're concerned about being overrun with it. I'm thinking that, and I guess I don't know necessarily what you mean by that. If it's the upkeep or if it's more so the actual output that it gives you. And if it's the output and if you don't want more than a half gallon every week to 10 days, then I would recommend going with a half gallon. Yeah. So, what's up? It, she asked if she could make ginger. We'll, we'll, we'll ginger. Give oh, yes. So, we actually, we have a ginger and there's a couple different ways that you can do this. One way is just adding the ginger in for the second ferment. And then another way is to actually make a ginger bug, which is another ferment in itself, and to add that to the kombucha, which we're not going to go into today. But just know there's a few different ways that you can do it. So let's let's try some of these. I'm going to burp this, I think. Well, just open them. Like, we've got, here, let's pull out all of the... Um, because we have our buchi made, so now we're moving into the second ferment. Now, actually, as we're trying these, and we're talking about this, I want to mention that we also have something really exciting that we're going to be doing starting on June 30th. We have put together a program called fermented drinks made simple and we are going to be teaching more a lot more about second ferments we're going to cover ginger beer the ginger bug water kefir and then i actually have a handful of others that are going to either be briefly touched on or the last two classes are open Mm -hmm. to public opinion <laughs> so it's going to actually be a live course every friday i'm thinking we're going to kind of mix up the times so that if it's at the same time every week i don't want people who can't make people it who can't make it at that time never be able to make any of the lives mm -hmm. um and the 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 biggest part of it that i think is so important is equipping you with systems to make this sustainable mm -hmm. because as a busy family we know what it's like to try and add something else in and how difficult that can be 
And so our goal is to set you up for success with some systems to make this very doable. Not just the original brewing, but also the second ferment. And also, we will have, sorry, Zazu is going crazy over there. He is talkative. <laughs> <laughs> you crack me up. I do not want to get splashed with bucha. The so that's apple. gonna that's gonna collect stuff really quickly. I know. And so you might want to go into a bigger and actually it's like a jam. Here, look at you the funnel yep. and then Yeah, you need to go into something bigger. You splash. Just go like this. Now pour away. So bit. anyway. Fermented drinks made simple. You're also going to receive just ongoing support and live, um, we'll have time for live questions and troubleshooting and all of that. We're going to cover lots of ferments or second ferments as we go through it. Slightly distracted by this disaster that's being created over here. Next time, put the strainer on the other side of the funnel. Well, that is already started, so. <laughs> Here, put, put something on this one. It's almost done. It's almost done. Oh, it smells so good. Which one is that? Cherry, Cherry almond. almond. I'm excited for this one. Move. Move the bottle. Yes. Don't tip on your bone. Now, to be honest, with these second ferments, I would have wanted them to sit a little bit longer. So, yeah. We wanted them to be ready for today, so. Technically, they kind of cut yesterday. Oh. <laughs> oh, yum. Whoa. That's really good. Whoa. <laughs> so, Christy's kind of undermining the uh, second ferment program, or the uh, fermenting stuff. Because the thing that she mentioned that I want to touch on is creating the system that's sustainable for you. And Patty, you mentioned getting overrun. And that's part of what this program is going to help you do is really start to narrow in on creating a life where you are able to enjoy these extra things that are healthy and beneficial for you and your family and create that culture of productivity and health and all that stuff. So um, how are people going to be able to get... The link is in the description. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good part, uh huh? So, um, and then, yeah. Oh, the link is in the in the description. But more importantly, almost forgot, there is a ten dollar off discount code that you can use. Just type in Bucha Live, one like just one word, Bucha Live, and it'll give you ten dollars off. Yeah. It is. It's twenty seven dollars. I think it's $27.95. And when you do the $10 off, it takes that down to $17.95. So, which we were looking, we were kind of looking at. So, what do you guys think of this one? I haven't tried it yet. I just tried it and I'm getting We looked guys... around, hold on. We looked around at all of the kombucha and fermented drink problems out there. And we were kind of flabbergasted <laughs> at the cost. Of some of these. Do you remember what some of the costs were? One was fifteen hundred dollars, one was like four seventy nine, one was like one sixty nine, and I I understand the value of education. We've we've paid for coaching programs, we've paid for other classes and things, and I and I understand the value. The value that people can bring. But I just did not expect I didn't expect it to be that much. I mean, we're talking, we're talking about something that, yeah. So, I don't know. Um, so, links in the description. Use the discount code, and we will see you there. Um, Brittany Murphy says, "Hi from Greensboro, North Carolina." Oh, I can just feel the humidity in your comment. And then Patty's Patty's revisiting. She wanted to get some advice on dehydrated scobies. You said that you had some. Some thoughts on that. And so circle back to that in a minute. I think this one's really good. Mm -hmm. Are you done? That's the raspberry yes, ginger yeah. lemon. So the raspberry ginger lemon is a much lighter. Like, Color and... Well, like taste. It tastes more... It's, it's a Duller? more way fizzier. 
Like it hates carbonated. Mm-hmm. <laughs> she cracks me up. Well, okay, dehydrated scobies, and then we're going to talk about um, fruit. We got her. Hi. Let's see if she'll Keeper of the Memories wants to know, will the recourses be recorded so she, if she can't yes. join live? Yes. Yes, absolutely. They will, the court, the classes along with... Ha <laughs> ha Say hi. Hi. <laughs> there will be an online, <laughs> there will be an online community and place where you can access all of the courses indefinitely. So, that is not a problem. As much as we'd love to see people live, I know that it's difficult. Definitely does not always work out. And that was, but so the online community will also be a place where you can ask questions and do troubleshooting. And so. keeper of the memories, the we will be covering how to make a ginger bug in that course. Yes, we will. In depth. Okay, dehydrated SCOBY. There's differing opinions out there. I have never dehydrated a SCOBY. We have talked about doing it. Um, Hi. If I were going to start from scratch, I would go with a live living scoby as opposed to the dehydrated. Will you give Zazu some peanuts because he's very obnoxious? The other day he did not want any peanuts. Really? I'm not sure if he was like overloaded on peanuts, but there were a ton on the floor and I tried giving him one and he's like, and then dropped it. Are you okay. pooping? Um, no. So, so. I'm not going to say that you can't do it. I'm not going to say that it doesn't work because I know that people sell dehydrated scobies, which tells me that a lot of people probably have success with them. But I do know that there is a hydration process that you have to go through. And I just, I just can't imagine that, that, that bacteria and yeast can withstand the, uh, at least, I mean, I don't know. I it, I don't understand it, to be perfectly honest. When I start thinking about dehydrating a bacteria, it needs moisture. It needs heat. Mm -hmm. And I don't, I don't know. So. I want to try this one. Mm -hmm. Me too. Me too. Me too. Me too. Um, Kathy says that she's so in. Yay, Kathy. Awesome. Rock and roll. <laughs> oh, I'll get stuff. Right? Okay, what's up? Yeah. What? Yeah. Clean up an aisle three. Oh. So, <laughs> no, put the, put the it, strainer. It, no, it, it, I got this. Okay. I got this. Okay, you can do it however you want. I'm going to do it. Thankfully, I'm just gonna I don't think they can see. I'm just going to leave it on her shirt, because there's not that much. Okay, that's fine. Um, that's so pretty looking. This is the blueberry. No, blackberry. Blackberry, mint. that one. Blackberry, blackberry mint. mint. With fresh mint from the garden. We did make a blackberry bucha a while back. Anyone who doesn't good. like mint is not going to like this. But I think those two go really well together. Wow. I think about all the people in the world that are part of drinking soda or pop, depending on what type of person you are, where in the country you are at. Yeah, that's and is. some of our children have never even had soda. Soda. And I don't mean her. <laughs> um, I think Breslin may have had it once. Maybe. And if they did, with it's been... Pizza at the old house. Maybe. There's one... No, no, she was with us. Oh, never mind. Now you're talking about um, but we have not purchased soda to drink in a long, long time. The last time since before we moved out here. Yeah. Like no, oh, since we moved. No. Well, we, so we be outside of the occasional Mexican Coke. Yeah. Like actually go to the store and purchase it and bring it home. It's, it has it has not been a staple in our home for quite some time. When you have the ability to create a healthy drink. With so much variety that is life giving, I, I, I once you're there, I can't imagine going back because the flavor is so much better. It's so much more robust, and then doesn't leave you feeling like garbage. So the kombucha 
is healthy and it serves the purpose of being an alternative to sodas if you're coming off of something like that. So there's those benefits. But when you get into the second ferments, you can even incorporate herbs into this to just boost the health benefits even more. We've done a few, uh, we did a um, red raspberry leaf. We did a red raspberry leaf kefir. kefir. Yeah. But you can, like, that's something that I want to kind of experiment more, more with. What it. herbs can go well with some of these other fruit flavors? She's looking at you. <laughs> Say hi, mama. <laughs> Keeper the member says she tried both of these. She's joking. She's all right. Okay. I didn't even take a drink. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> okay. And Jolene's just staring at him. Um, Keeper of the Memory says she's tried both dehydrated and live scoby. She definitely prefers the live scoby. What a difference. That's what I'm thinking. So much yeah. more life and robustness. Um, and then Kylie says, so you mentioned soda. She used to drink to Dr. Pepper every day. She quit drinking it four years ago. Has anyone ever heard of a Dr. Pepper flavored bucha? No, but we just did. So here's what we can do. There's sarsaparilla root. There's um, no, stop. vanilla. All what sorts Dr. Pepper, of... Dr. Pepper is... is molasses and brown sugar? What is Dr. Pepper? Like, I know that I've never it's like, Dr. Oh no, stop. that's root beer. I'm sorry, <laughs> Dr. Pepper. I think Dr. Pepper is like a cherry vanilla flavor, isn't it? No, no. There's there's cherry Dr. Pepper. Um, oh gosh, I don't know how to describe it. Mimi's, I think Mimi's got a jar of it downstairs. Why don't you get it and see? But. We can make it. I don't think. No, you don't. Don't grab a bottle. All right. I we can. We can definitely is. make it. Um, and that you would be. You don't know what it is, but you can do it. We, we'll definitely figure <laughs> it out. On, in this, in this, in this thing. So we tried making a root beer, some months ago, maybe a year. I'm trying to remember. It was Christmas season. Christmas. Yeah. So that was that was interesting. Um, it didn't turn out. Well. I think we need to revisit it's the, that. I can't remember if it's the sarsaparilla or the sass. I think it's sassafras or if it's the sassafras. One of those is super expensive. Yeah. And so Both of them are. it was something that was like, we, I was afraid to experiment with it because I mean we we're gonna be spending way too much on yeah whatever those, that root those. was. <clears throat> so first wave of the rain. You know, stuff. Okay, I want to try the ginger. Me too. Mm. Oh, but I think my favorite is cherry vanilla or cherry. That's not shocking because that's your favorite so, ginger or favorite. Kiwi. I think I like this. I like the raspberry the ginger. ginger. I like this one. I like it because it's. I just like that's what I just like. You do it. darker. Yeah, yeah. not darker, but did you shake it a little bit? Uh, no. Dad. That's fine. That's not a lot of ginger. Yeah, hold on. Yeah, hold on. Whoa. Hold on. Hold on. Okay, so I want to talk about continuous brew. Ooh, tickle, tickle. So with the continuous brew, the way that it works is you have a vessel and you put your sweet tea and your scoby and your pre-fermented kombucha in there and you just, you have a spigot at the bottom and you take off what you want. And then as it gets lower, you add to it. <clears throat> we have never done that strictly because the, um, the quantity that we would have to do in order to sustain our family's needs, to sustain our family's desires for kombucha <laughs> needs is it would be outrageous. Like we would have to do such a large amount <clears throat> plus having lots of kids where everybody's just kind of taking it as they want. I feel like it would get down and you don't, it's in, like, it's a solid container. So you can't really see how much is in there. And I think that wow. wow. I just, I've, it's never been appealing for our Licorice. Family. That's what's in Dr. Pepper. Licorice. Ah, I was yes, to... you could definitely do it. Though. Yes. Like licorice root? You do like anus in it. Okay, Kylie, you're making, you're, okay, hold on a second. You keep talking about that. I'm going to read this in a second. <laughs> anyway, if it were just, that's really good. 
if it were just Kevin and I, maybe. Maybe I would entertain doing the continuous brew. But other than that, I just, I don't think it's family friendly. And I have friends who have done it with family, but I don't think that their kids all drink it. Drink it at least not as regularly as what we do. Because we have, we do water kefir with lunch and we do kombucha with dinner. So one of the things I want to just touch on with the Second Ferment program and making the kombucha is all of the life-giving things that are going inside of our kids' bodies and building up their immune systems. It's not often that they're sick. There's a little thing going through right now, but I have to contribute part of their being as healthy as they are is A, all of the fermented things that they're eating, the living organisms that they're taking into the body, continuous exercise, sunlight, sunlight, yeah, sunlight. and being home more often. Um, they're homeschooled. That's why she's weird. Um, Who is she? <laughs> But having all of those things together, I think, is what's going to make and combine that package of health. So, um, and I'm, I'm excited about that. So, uh, Kylie says, um, the richness of cola, the sweetness of cherry, the subtle tough of licorice root, root beer, tartness of raspberry, destined of citrus notes. <laughs> Maybe an experiment for later. Oh, yeah. Because I used to drink dark pepper. A long time ago. So, she, she says you guys are awesome. Thank you. Appreciate it. And auto, <laughs> auto correct. That's funny. Um, yeah, auto correct is not as correct. Zestiness of citrus new Dustin. I was I was wondering like Dustin. I'm like all right, I can go for that. So citrus. <laughs> so you could do like a um, orange zest. orange zest, licorice root, lemon zest, lemon zest, a little bit of molasses, and like some red pepper bread. flakes. Give it really? a little zing. Oh, yeah. Not, no, I wouldn't. Yeah. I okay. think that it would be really easy to curate, to come up with something that's similar. Cool. Yeah. All right. <clears throat> I'll see you in the program for sure on that. Okay, what's next? Make some second ferments. All right, let's do it. We should get these out of here. I'm going to finish this. Oh, darn. <laughs> Wait, I want to try the plain gucha. Okay. I'm gonna say I I'm, think that this. Can you move? Oh, sorry. Thanks. Look at how good she's doing with like holding her body. Mm -hmm. Little Jolene is growing up so fast. Did she drain it? Whoa, whoa, whoa. Was it any fizzier at all? Well, it's been burped and moved around a lot, so I'm fizzing up. So, you know what the other thing is? Oh yeah, I like the second ferments way better. Is that... Excuse me. I'm moving. We need to do an experiment. Chicken broth. Ew. We need to experiment to see doing a second ferment with a bottle of kombucha that was just recently finished. Oh yeah, because that Versus works. doing a second ferment with a bottle that has sat for a few weeks. So one of these we're gonna have to experiment with. Let me see if I can find our. Kylie says, Kevin, I'll take the class if we can make Dr. Pepper Bucha. So Dr. Bucha. Dr. Bucha. I'm definitely down with some ex like I love experimenting. <laughs> and one of the things. Okay. I, we I don't get pressured into ultimatums. Listen, this Bucha yes. challenge. This Bucha challenge is. I was very um, conservative with the flavors and the recipes that I put on here. I didn't want to do anything that was too hard to obtain. Like the most difficult to obtain are like the, there's a guava one where you have to get guava nectar and then there's one that has any passion fruit in it. And, or maybe I didn't even do, yeah, I did the passion, passion fruit. fruit, passion fruit juice. So like I did things that, Oh, were right. mostly easy to obtain and use and recipes that weren't kind of too far out there like i didn't put the bacon kombucha in here so that's a, just a new fresh idea and i would i do not think that would be good I, like, well we gotta try it but like cooked bacon inside so kombucha? this 
right here, this fermentation made simple. This is where we're going to be doing some kind of like off the wall experimenting with crazy flavors and coming up with the new healthy Dr. Pepper. Right. You're going to need Willy Wonka. <laughs> <laughs> Willy Wonka Vucha. <laughs> Okay, so we are going to do, we've got, we're going to do another ginger bucha, a, another raspberry ginger, did you get, yep, yeah, we've got raspberry ginger lemon, blackberry, an orange creamsicle, I thought we did that, where is that? We did do that, did we miss one? I pulled all, everything that was in there out, maybe it's in the garage. We're missing oh, oh no! Did it put it away. <laughs> here is the the problem is that explode when there's stuff in here. There we go. I don't think it's gonna explode. I, I do. I don't. It's. I think that it's. No, nope, it's coming up. Okay. I told so, you! So this is what happens when you don't refrigerate it. And it sits for an extra day. What do you think, you missed Jolene? One. Look at you, you're practically standing on the Nope. So if you have something that's fizzy, you can open it, let it kind of carbonate and then close it and then open and close and open and close until sometimes it can open take an it. hour so i think we're good here a few people are requesting a shopping list but for look. the program oh yeah shopping list for the program that's a good idea so the shopping list is going to get sent out this weekend if you sign up for the program you're going to get the schedule which is right here right you'll get it's this good. I was not paying attention at all. <laughs> Sorry. I will be sending out the shopping list for everything this weekend. We ended up making a last minute decision to go to the homeschool conference here. And that took my time that I was going to be putting together a shopping list yesterday. So, okay. we yesterday. second for mess. Oh, baby. She might be. I'm going to need, yep. Yeah. All right, second for mess. You know what? Let's... I'm going to go. You will pee. I'll be back. Cool. And then I'll be the Whoa! Whoa. <laughs> Is that gnarly? Oh, yeah. Uh, nope, I don't need that one. So, I like kombucha. I don't like kombucha like everybody else. You used to like it. It was, it was because of your, um... I have a... I have a tooth that does not agree with me. And... I... Can't drink kombucha like these guys. You um, could drink a half gallon a day. <laughs> but the ginger beer, that is my, that is my like, oh my goodness, that's amazing. Oh, I'll zig you zag. Um, that is one thing that we're going to be teaching inside the program as well. Grayson has been experimenting and I think we've darn near perfected the ginger beer. That is so good. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. Woo, you're sliding. So the homeschool conference is interesting. Um, there was a guy there yesterday who was talking about family culture and the culture of America and what's going on in the world. Um, and the, the call to actually homeschool or not homeschool your kids. And that's one of the interesting things that we've, we've talked about is that a lot of people, or we used to think that homeschooling was a calling, that you were called to homeschool your kids. Whereas he was saying that, no, homeschooling is the norm. It has always been the norm in our society until the Industrial Revolution, really when the father was taken out of the home and then there was the introduction of school systems and everything. And something that he said that really resonated with me was um, you take your kid and you put them in a building for six, seven hours a day to be taught from someone who you don't know 
stuff you don't know about. They're reading things that you don't know about. And sometimes with the regulations that are going on in the world right now, you're not able to know what's being taught to your kids. And then while you're at your kids at school, your kids are hanging out with other kids that you know nothing about. So for one, what, fourth of their day, they're hanging out with influences that are way beyond your control or probably even what you want your kids being influenced by. And that, that resonated with me yesterday, big time. Um, oh, Joe, Mama's back. Oh, Mama's almost ready. The calling to homeschool our kids was always there. We always wanted to homeschool. Um, try that. What? I don't know. It was just very interesting very to see and hear orange. that perspective from somebody orange. on the other side of the equation. He's he's older and yeah, all that. So anyway, the ginger beer is my favorite. I don't know how I got sidetracked there. You gotta drink all the Six. stuff. Now is not a good time for you to walk away and do your own thing. Well, I was waiting for you to tell me what was the. Do you just want me to start pureeing stuff? Yeah. All right. Start with, like, pick, a, pick one of the recipes and move forward. All right, that's gross. Let's go blackberry mint. Blackberry mint. I don't need mint. Go with some mint. Oh, uh, hi. Please. Or you can yell at little kids. They love to pick mint leaves. All right, I have blackberries. It's approximately a half cup of. Hey, frozen azure. Blackberries Rosalind. in the little mixer. We pureed it because we found that you weren't able to. Well, okay, wait, wait, wait. wait. Is it crushable? Um, some of it's still frozen. Because I was going to suggest Rosalind. if it's crushable and we can get it in there, you that we should do me. that as opposed to the pureeing. Which takes me to one of the topics of fresh fruit versus frozen fruit, I'm going to say there's no difference, and freeze-dried fruit actually works really well also. Yes, you can mash it. Still a little Perfect. frozen, so, but I'm going to blend it. Well, the ideal scenario is to actually have the whole fruit to go in there as opposed to making it through it. Alright. And that's a lot, babe. Like. Is it, well, you said half a cup, and I bet you if I puree this and put it into a thing, it's going to be half a cup. That looks like a cup. It does. <laughs> Don't hate the mess. Show, show, show that you can't see it. Yeah, that's a lot. It's not a lot. So, the ideal scenario is to have more of like a whole fruit that you're putting in there that the... Um, Bacteria and yeast can actually eat up. They eat on the sh like they'll feed off of the sugars in there. Well, you're putting the puree, which is the entire fruit, in there anyway. I understand. Is it, is it, that. Is it different? Well, molecularly speaking, miraculous. Sometimes, like I can't remember what it's called. It breaks up something to where I believe that it is better to have a mash or cubed. Say. Now you do want like if we're talking about like pineapple. You want to put cubes of pineapple as opposed to like large pieces of pineapple because otherwise y your it's surface area is significantly less and that the ferments aren't going to get into the like the center of the pineapple as well not not at all obviously but as well so okay so this is getting like a puree <laughs> this is okay similar to that like i got a couple chunks in here that I think that just pureeing it is the best idea. Or well, you think this works. Okay, so... I don't know if I'll be able to get it in the jar. Did you bring these mint leaves? Breslin brought us mint leaves. Beautiful Breslin, thank you. Which one is this? Is this the orange? Mm-hmm. Can I fly it? Where's the jar? That's really good. <laughs> and our orange supply is going up. Do you want to use this or this? I want to use the, or the, the, the one that we just made. The one we just made. Okay. Did you not drink all of them? Did you? You didn't bother. I did not bother. Can you move my phone? Oh, I can smell the mint. The mint that we're using is actually apple mint. 
Oh, you should make it the apple mint. Do you want me to wash it? Yes, please. There you go. Next time, sweetie, get the whole leaves. Um. Okay, so, Fun. do you want me to throw some of this in here and mix it up and see if I can't? Yeah, that's easier to get it in the bottom. No, oh, no, 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 no. That's not what I'm, but I guess that'll work. I'm telling you, like, that's a lot, babe. I don't think this yeah. is the apple mint, Mom. The silver fuzzy one is apple mint. The what? The silver fuzzy one is apple mint. It's not super fuzzy or silver. Look at this, it's more green. Okay. Yeah, just to appease you, I will put half a cup in I the cooker. Oh. Goat. Maybe there's a lot of apple mint. Okay. okay. Quarter? Alright. Hold on. Is this the apple mint? Or is this the blueberry mint jar? No, it's just a jar. Well, can we use it for the blueberry mint? Alright, it's it's close to a half cup. It's a little over. Over yeah. is totally over. Mom? Um, what? This is the can blackberry. This be the blackberry mint jar? Yes. I need the so I'm mixing up a little bit of the kombucha into this cup here, and it's going to go inside the jar. Is this going in there? Yep. Cool. I want to know, does anybody have any second ferment flavors that they've done? You sit over there. That's good spot. And I'm not sure if that came through. Does anybody have any second ferment flavors that they've tried that they love? Or tried that they don't love? Did you cut that one? I did, but oh, I, I didn't end up cutting it. I did cut it. All right, I don't know how this is going to work because this is. The cutting did not work at all. This is not. Shoot, Dad. This is not. This is not going to work. Well, just. I'll try. Scoop, but like, use a, a skewer. I, 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 will, I will try. one of the things about the bottles. No, no, no. <laughs> there, he is metal. <laughs> There's a perfect example. Oh, shoot, and you used a fork. Where if you can. What else would you use? If you can avoid metal, but you don't have to. Where are the wooden skewers? But for the just regular kombucha, 
We have stored ours in air temp for the longest time and it has not been a problem. Room. Room? Air temp. Oh, room temp. <laughs> that one. I'm sorry, I can't do the I can't do the funnel thing. It's not working. So, puree. Shopping list, get a mixer. <laughs> um, can you hand me the list over there? Yep. Oh, this is a fun one. Okay, I have for you um, 14 different things. Actually, I'm going to add a 15. 15 different things that you can do with extra scobies. Because if you make this, you make it a lot, you're going to notice that you have a lot of scobies and you're not going to know what to do with them. Pause. So, option number one is to make a second batch of bucha. So, what you do is you start with your one gallon, and then you have two scobies at the end of that brewing that one gallon, and then the next time, instead of just making one more gallon, you make two. That's what I highly recommend until you get to a lot. <laughs> Number two, this is my add-on that I just thought of earlier today, is to just continue to add more scobies to each bottle that you brew. Like we just put in that one, we put three or four scobies back in there because it will brew faster and a little bit stronger um. if you like it strong. Number three is to share it with a friend or someone locally. Number four, which I've come to the conclusion after coming up with this list that it should never really be the option, but you can compost it. Number five is to feed it to your chickens. Back when we had a farm, that's what I used to always do with our scobies was go feeding the chickens and they loved them. Hey, mom. Number, yes. Oh, sorry, do you want to finish? Yep. I've got a few more to go through, yeah. Okay. Number six is to cut them up and you can add them to your scobies. So, er, I'm sorry, not to your scobies. Cut up the scobies and add them to your smoothies. <laughs> scoby smoothie. So, and you're not going to really taste it, but it's going to give you a nice little probiotic boost in your smoothie. Number... Seven, I think I'm on, is to make scoby jerky. Now this is one that I've talked about for years, but I haven't quite convinced Kevin to try it. He's the jerky maker, and he's never, he, he hasn't gone for it yet. But I'm thinking that in this program that we're doing, that we're going to definitely try some scoby jerky. Keeper of the Memory says raspberry lime is one of her favorites. Uh, that's what I was going to say. That's, yes. Nice. Then you don't have it in the... Okay, keeper of the memories, do you... Puree? Um, do you puree your raspberries? Do you use freeze-dried raspberries? Do you use fresh raspberries? Dehydrated. Okay, and then Stephanie says, I'm not quite sure if I followed where you were putting the second ferment flavoring. Into the just started kombucha or this from this morning with the scoby or into the second week old kombucha? The, the second, second week. week old kombucha. Yes. So we bottled this kombucha here. Sorry, that's, yeah, that's, we so can't see. This, this is the one that we just, this is the two week old. That's been fermenting for the last two weeks. And this is the one that we just made right here. So that's going to sit for two weeks before we do anything to yep. it. And what we're doing is we're going to take the. Excellent all, question. Already, we, we, we're taking the already, already fermented. fermented kombucha. And we're going to fill it into this bottle here. If you try and make a second ferment while your kombucha is brewing, it will ruin your scoby. Oh, shoot. Yeah. What? Oh, this is the, I want to make sure I put the orange, the orange. in there. This is the orange? Um, no, this is kombucha. And where's the orange? Just drink it. Okay. Time out. Number eight is to store them in a scoby hotel. So that you have them for later to either make for yourself or give away or use for any of these other reasons. Thank you. Number nine is to use them as a facial mask. You blend them up and it's supposed to be really good for your skin. I imagine myself I walking around with the scobies all over my face and be like... 
<laughs> oh, kids. you need that. I do, I need that. Yeah. Number 10 is to feed them to your pets. Which ones? Any? Really? Yeah. yeah. Like the guinea pigs you need them? No, no, no. Uh, maybe. I guess the. So. I don't think they have wood. Copper would. Copper Co probably would. Copper probably would. Copper is our hedgehog. Wait, 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 wait. The cats hey. and the dogs. We're back. And it's probably going to take some encouragement to get them to eat it. But you can blend them up and mix them with other things. Like the dog treats, cat treats, cat yes. food. Yes. Number 11 is to make scoby candy or gummies. I want to try this one. Number 12 is to blend it into salad dressings. This is one where I feel like we should easily be able to blend them up and have them in salad dressings on a daily basis. Okay, there's a part of me that says, oh, this, is, this sounds great. And then there's another part of me that's like, this sounds kind of disgusting. <laughs> <laughs> well, we won't know until we try it, right? And a new phone. Um, number 13 is to use it as fertilizer. It is my understanding that plants love them. Number 14 is to make scoby pickles, which I think, I don't know. I don't know if I can get beyond the texture. Like, <laughs> that one is going to take some like octopus encouragement for me. <laughs> one tablespoon of sugar is going into the blackberry mint second ferment. And that is to, since blackberries don't have a super high sugar content, it's to feed the kombucha as it ferments. When you use a fruit that does have a higher sugar content, we do not add the sugar. Um, Did you want two for the sugar? Is that what you said? No, just one. Number... Thank you, number two. 15 is to use them as hair conditioner. Again, warm them up and use them to condition your hair. So I really want to try that one. I I think that'll. Yeah. So. Ho! Whoa is right. That went fast. <laughs> oh boy. <laughs> Keep things interesting around can you, can you see it? <laughs> I, I overflowed. Yeah, they can they can see where I'm going. Yeah, let's see how ridiculous. Ho! This is why I have a hard time sometimes being in the kitchen with Kevin because he, we, we, we have lovingly dubbed him as the tornado in the family. <laughs> and Asher? Yes, and he used, oh no, did it go off? No, we're still good. Yeah. It's, it, like, it sat for a second and it said, you're live. And so I didn't know if it went off or not. I'm producing mini tornadoes. Yes, you are producing mini tornadoes. Hey, but you know what? And you're starting to realize how... Destructive tornadoes can be. <laughs> um, how can I say this? How ridiculous I've been. <laughs> okay, but listen, tornadoes, yeah. listen, tornadoes may destroy everything, but they do it quickly. And I destroy everything. <laughs> but I'm also part FEMA. <laughs> so I come in and clean it up. I, I didn't want to be part FEMA. Okay. Um, is out of Urbucha until July 6th? Grr. Wait, they're out of what? They're out of Urbucha. Is yours out of Urbucha until the July actual, 6th? The actual, like the bottled Bucha or the starter that we're giving away? Like the SCOBY. The like SCOBY? Patty also says... Is that what they're out of? Because listen. Number one. Keep out of stock items in your cart. <laughs> How inflated, inflated yeah. this is getting. So listen, number one, look around. Go to like Craigslist or Facebook Marketplace and see if you can find somebody local. If there's a Weston A. Price um, charter near you, I bet you can find somebody locally who has a SCOBY that'll give you. Number two, we have talked a number of times about shipping SCOBYs. We talked about putting them in vacuum seal bags and, and sending our, them out. Okay. And our boot should produce SCOBYs. So like mix that with. I, I'm going to. So I'm going to take two tablespoons. Where's my, can I get the mixer thing, Harvard? Um, the raspberry ginger, 
we didn't talk about this because since we're out of cherry almond, since I'm almond actually, I'm doing cherry, I'm doing cherry ginger. That's one of these flavors. Okay. Um, oh, you're you're cheating. I'm I'm totally cheating. He's you. moving out of the challenge. It was that it was an accident. Can I get the um, the what? Can I get the lot of this? Oh, uh, yeah. Uh, Patty says that she's a retired school public school teacher, and she would 150 percent homeschool now. So. I heard you talking a little bit about homeschooling. When we started, like, we talked about homeschooling before we even got married. So it was kind of like a, okay. it's just what we're going to do. But when, ever since ever, I remember people talking, like, you know, public school is the default, and you have to... Sorry. You have to really pray about if you're called to homeschool to make sure that, you know, God is going to be with you in this journey or whatever. And a number of years ago, like before COVID, I remember talking with you and saying, you know, I think that's ridiculous. I really believe that homeschool needs to be the default in our minds and that... Just do it you need to be dead set that God is going to be there for your family and your kids. I mean, he's, it, it's not, some people do not have the capability of homeschooling. I would encourage you to look at ways that you can make yourself capable. Two tablespoons of ginger going in. Oh, look how fizzy that is. That is, I just think that it needs to be more of a default as opposed to <laughs> a, like a second thought. That's Bottoms so up. crazy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, sweet little miss. Whoa. Is that burping? Oh, babe. What on earth happened? <laughs> oh, my goodness. <laughs> fruit that Kevin is doing right now. It's ginger. ginger. It's, it's a mess. Okay, but it's ginger that has been um, processed in the food processor. Because we, what we do is we buy large amounts of ginger and then Can we... Yes, please. Can I take her? In just a second, yes. Okay. We buy large amounts of ginger, and then we just honestly leave the skin on it and throw it in the food processor, and then we freeze them in ice cube trays or in quarter cup increments Pops. to use for ferments. So we don't actually have any, and for fire set. I mean, everything that we use ginger for, the only thing that I wouldn't put it with the skin on it into like a stir fry. I have. And it's fine? It's fine. It's totally fine. So, stop filling your ginger because it's one of the most awful things about ginger ever. Yep. I hate peeling ginger. <laughs> so, it, I think it makes it a little bit more bitter, but it's not going to hurt you. So, what's up? This is my pie. I don't why not to. So... I was publicly educated. You know, I've oh, always okay. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so was I. We both we both went to public school. Okay, so I think that I felt very challenged yesterday because I have always had this mindset that it should be your default. Our kids are meant to be raised by the parents. There's a reason why God has given them to us and put them in our home, not to send them, ship them off for however many, whatever percentage of their life. And, but yet, I've never really felt, I've never really felt called to kind of push that opinion on anyone else. And since, nope. After listening nope. to 
Andrew Kudawa yesterday. I feel... I got this. <laughs> Round two. <laughs> Kevin and I both, he, you know, he said something. He's like, we need to get out there and we need to increase our numbers. We need to increase the numbers of people who are homeschooling. <laughs> and <laughs> I've never Tom, really what? felt like evangelizing homeschool, but we both... We both, we weren't even together when he said this. I was like in the doorway and she was in the thing. Or maybe we were together, I can't remember. But, no, but we didn't talk about it until this morning. Until this morning. He's like, you need to go out and convince people that homeschooling is something that they should, can, and could be doing. Because it's going to help transform the next generation. The next generation of politicians, doctors, lawyers, even educational people. People that are creating things to train people. And I heard that and I was just like, thank you. Yes. Yep. Because, I've again, Chrissy, is ne we've never been called to be like, all right, what's up? Why aren't you homeschooling? Because we've always just had this very passive thought about it. But when we see what's going on in the world and the destruction of the home and the family and the children and the future generations, granted, Jesus is probably going to come back before we even get a chance to have any of this play out to our advantage or the advantage of the next generation. But let's just say that doesn't happen for another few hundred years. We need, in a hundred years from now, we need people who can, stand, who can stand for right and wrong, justice, compassion, for Jesus, for family, for man, for woman. And if, if that's something that you can bring into your life, homeschooling, without a doubt, do it. Christy has developed systems in our life that have made homeschooling doable with having a business, having young children, having multiple young children, <laughs> having a husband who makes big messes. So if she can do it, you can do it. And I'm going to go off on a slight limb here, but people have asked us to talk about homeschooling and have talk, asked us to talk about parenting and home management and all of that. We will. We will get there. It's just not going to be, well, it's not going to be here. It's going to be, it, it's going to be, in a, it's going to be in a different, it's going to be in a different thing right now. Except for on our lives. Like, we'll throw in anything about homeschooling yeah. on our lives. <laughs> when, when we are, like we were called to food, we were called to managing food because food is such a huge part of our lives as people and being able to have communion as a congregation, as a, as a family, as, as fellowshipping families. We wanted to be able to uh, bring it to the table. <laughs> okay. Cherry ginger. It's not cherry ginger, is it? No, I'm it's sorry. Raspberry. It's raspberry ginger. ginger. Half a cup of raspberry, one tablespoon of sugar, two tablespoons of ginger in the book. And obviously I've made lots of messes and we've been talking, but this does not take that much time. And this is a great opportunity if you have a spouse and you have young kids, you guys can do it together as a family. If you don't have young kids and you just have a spouse or if you're just by yourself, do it, put on, dog. do it with your dog. If you don't have a dog, cat, if you're just by yourself, put on a great book or some music. Um, we do a lot of things together. We call it our date. So we're, we'll just include this into our date. Um, so it does not take long. Are we doing any more? Is that good? Yes. What do you want Make to do? bucha. It's good for your marriage. <laughs> You can do a bucha date. Um, well, I, think that's, I think that's good. Good, good, because I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, to... Let's go. I'm going to make some messes. <sighs> um, okay. RWC LTD 3 says, how do you make a Scooby Hotel? So, you basically, you take a bottle and you just start piling up Scobies and fill it with water. It's just, rather than actually having them in the sweet tea to create kombucha they're just there kind of living in a somewhat dormancy since they don't have as much food to consume and it's just a place to store and some people keep their scoby hotels in the refrigerator some people will keep them in just sitting out yeah um okay so jeanette hi jeanette it's been a while um ginger oh that was the comment what's the yellow fruit Yes, okay, join me in the dirt, thank you. 
Pat says, I keep saying I want to homeschool when the time comes, but there's always comments about why not do. Yep. Um, yep. All good. Kylo says, I went through pri private, public, public, charter, hated all of it. Mm-hmm. Um, okay. Red Lantern says, I feel like it's dangerous to put kids in public school at this point. Agreed. Totally. And somebody I'm else says, so, Agreed. like, there's so many times, I can't tell you how many situations happen in our world, in our day-to-day -day life, where I say, I am so thankful that we homeschool. I cannot imagine, like, what you have to deal with. Are you ready for this? When your kids are in school. Harbor wouldn't be who she is today if she was homeschooled. No. None no, of if her she children. wasn't homeschooled. Oh, I'm sorry. It, yeah, if, if, she, if she wasn't homeschooled, none of our kids would be, I don't think our marriage would be what it is. No. Our home would not be what it is. Our friendships together as a family would not be what it is. Because, uh, I'm gonna, I'm just gonna say it. Because this is our channel, we can say whatever we want. The enemy is out there to seek kill and destroy to devour you and I believe that the public school system is in the top five if not top three things out there that is destroying the family. family yeah obviously us men as leaders of our home it's our number one job to protect the greenhouse of our home and the saplings that are in there and these people who are going to grow up to be mighty oaks Sorry. both men and women the school system not all teachers are bad, bad, but as a whole, the system has become evil. And there are certain things out there where our kids say something's evil. I'm like, you don't even know what evil is. You're inside of a greenhouse that is nothing but love and discipline and training. Evil is out there. Evil is in the music, in the TV, in the commercials on TV. Mm -hmm. And... We have made a conscious choice that we are going to let our kids be exposed to a certain element of evil so that they understand what it means to have to put on the armor of God to go out into the world. And Kylie, homeschooling is going to be life. Okay. Oh, okay. Dream in the Dirt says, back in the 80s, the superintendent refused to let me homeschool. Glad things had changed. <laughs> um, our growing McFamily says, yes, I'm super excited to officially start homeschooling this year. Woohoo! My oldest has hit school age. I hope that age is somewhere between what's right for him or her. At least seven. And you. You don't have to start when they're four years old. <laughs> seven, eight, nine, ten. <laughs> Are there non-religious homeschooling curricula? Absolutely. Yeah. Shh, there's just there's so much out there. Um, you will find an overwhelming majority of them are Christian based, but you can you can put a filter on there and siphon through it. Um, Patty says, Red Lantern, my husband teaches public schools, high school at four years, four more years. It's dangerous for all public schools right now, not just physically either. Mm-hmm. Nice. Um, Kathy says, yes, absolutely. Kyla says, I really cannot wait to hear your perspective on parenting and homeschool. Thank you. It's coming. Um, that podcast. It's coming. RWC says, thanks for Lantern. Says, RWC, your channel, but very controversial. Yes, and that's fine. You know, we the thing about social media and the thing about YouTube is everybody's going to have their own opinion. And what we believe is what's what we believe for what's right for our family strongly. and what we believe in is faith family fun and freedom and that's that's a thread that is woven throughout everything that we do we believe that the freedom in our world today is being robbed but the we freedom, we also believe in anyone else's right to believe in something totally yeah. different if they want to i just don't like it being shoved down everyone else's throat. The thing that we are learning is that we're a little bit more libertarian than we are the public. You know, we're conservative, but if you want to do whatever, that's fine. You know? I don't have a problem with what the schools want to do for the schools. Their plan's their plan. It's just not the plan for my family. It's that simple. And that's the beautiful thing about America. Still today, we have well, that the freedom. The problem is that it's just also not the plan for the society that we want to live in. 
um, you know, and in faith, you know, we, we both believe that we're all sinners and we're saved by grace through faith from the Lord Jesus Christ who died on the cross mm-hmm. to save us from in hell and damnation. Mm-hmm. I'm not going to be afraid to say that. And I have to ask for forgiveness and repent on a regular basis of the things that I, I'm doing wrong in my life. And if you believe that there's not a God, okay. That's your belief. I'm not going to tell you that you're wrong. I'm just going to tell you that that's not what I believe. And that's okay. And we believe that the freedom that is being removed from the families is damaging for the future of our generations to come. And yeah, I don't know. And then um, family. We believe in the family unit. We believe that God made man and woman to become one unit in that what God brings together, no man to separate. You know, we, Christy and I do 85 to 90% of our life together. I mean, if not more. Um, And he called us to reproduce, to populate the earth. And we're making an attempt. Um, We are grateful for the opportunity to do so. Yes. Mm -hmm. We don't take that lightly because there's, there's a whole thing there. And then the other part of the thread that weaves everything together is fun. We believe that God has called us to have life and have it to the full, to have fun. And I feel like we have fun regularly, all the time. And I think that one of the things that, like, having those those core values has really enabled to happen in our life is that there is joy in our life even when things are incredibly hard. And I think that that is amazing. Good. Yes. So, um, couple couple comments on here. Nothing 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 amazing. Does fruit acidity have an impact on the second ferment? So I honestly, I don't, I don't know. The only, like, as far as it actually fermenting, I do not believe so. I mean, kombucha in itself is an, as an acidic creature. creature. Thank you. And so it's just going to, like, I think it's not going to make a huge difference having the acid or not in the fruit that you're second fermenting. Um, I'm not 100% on that though, to be perfectly honest. So. I don't know, but we can find out. <laughs> um, all right, I kinda, we kind of went out so of the rant. I need to, I need to say one more thing. You, we bottled the second ferments, but we did not write on the bottles. So. Come here, baby. Let's. It's da da. Mom is going to write on hey. the bottles. Yeah, you. I'm eating. Yo. I need mean, that time. That's right. Okay, you want to hear something crazy? What? When? Not you. No, them. <laughs> <laughs> um, when, when Harbor was this age, I totally freaked out. I was 20, I was 20, I was 21 when Harbor was born, and I was a total idiot. I. I did. I, I freaked out. I shut down. I closed myself off. I buried myself in work, and oh my goodness, this little girl is like Harbor 2.0, and she's little. She's tiny. She's so cute. She's so sweet. Now you screamed a lot. <laughs> like you weren't happy unless you were with your mom. <laughs> yeah, look at that smile. Oh my goodness. So I'm so grateful that I get around a two, around two. You love those lights. She's just round two? Oh, because she's like... Ha- harder her, round two, she's yeah. Like so I get to do this all over again. And I look at Harbor. She's 15. And I'm like, oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. Okay. That's that's it. That's all I got. Day 16th. 16th. There are so many mentioned about Father's Day weekend. Um, for all you fathers out there, for all you dads, happy Father's Day. Go build mighty... Go build mighty men and women. Um, stand for justice and have some resolve and 
all of that um, stuff. We are doing nothing for Father's Day this weekend, and that is great because every day is... We've been skipping a few holidays, and that's okay. Oh my goodness. Because... See, every day is a holiday. Yeah. You know, let's touch on that freedom for a second. And then we need to go because it's 12.15. Yeah. Okay. Never, you know what? I'm not going to get into it. Freedom. <laughs> freedom! Okay, before we sign off, thank you so much for everyone who has joined us. We hope that you, you learned something, you learned how not to do a couple things, and you were able to be entertained slightly. Um... The link to the description to the Fermented Made Simple program is in the description below. Use the coupon or the, 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 the discount code Bucha Live. Is that what it is? Mm -hmm. Bucha Live in the checkout. You get $10 off. It's a $27 program. Super reasonable. So you can be 17 bucks. Um, and all of that. So we will be back next week with another video, um, the, the June inventory. Well, yeah, but that's, um, preparing for our leisure hall yeah. and inventory and how we, how we move things along. Other fun stuff. Um, so yeah. Okay. There's a few comments I'm going to talk well, I'm gonna read these real quick. Okay. To start with the bottle of ginger juice from Azure. Yes. Yes. That's honestly, it's the best way to start. It's so easy. So Jeanette, Jeanette says there's um, a lot more variety in curriculum now than when she started mm -hmm. back, you know, in the late nineties. And then farmers market sells tomorrow morning. Yay! Go to the farmers market. Um, Stephanie says sorry to go feed the kids and get done with naps. Sorry, <laughs> gotta go. Sorry, gotta go. Yeah, did I not say that the right way? No. Nope. Okay. See you, Stephanie. Thanks for the lovely time. Thanks for joining us. Laughing so hard at Kevin. Something tells me you were the class humor engineer. Thanks, family. R W um, C says thank you for sharing your values and being respectful of mine. That's what the world needs more of. Absolutely. I'm so excited to meet you soon. Big family. Absolutely. We will see you. Maybe next week. Is that when it comes in? Yeah, we'll find out today when it'll be here. Yeah, so, um, and then you'll get a link from the Azure, and you can sign up for the uh, the open drop, and you can come hang out and talk and all that fun stuff. So, and RWC, thank you for being here. Hey, even though your values do not align with ours, that's totally okay. We don't cram things down people's throats. Mm -hmm. We'll share if people ask. We're not here to tell you that you're wrong. We're not here to say that we're right, because... We believe in freedom, and you can say whatever you want, and um, all that stuff. So, yeah, that's it. There's a couple more things. Um, Jeanette says, I never did get to fermenting the jalapenos. We are them, but I did ferment the raw milk this week. I do that on a weekly basis sometimes, accidentally. Um, Jeanette says, enjoyed you all today. Thank you for coming. And Catherine May says, will you do water kefir recipe? Yes, the water kefir, we will discuss that in the Fermenting Made Simple program. We will do, yeah, the Fermenting Made Simple will include an in-depth water kefir and also the second ferments for the water kefir, too. Excellent. Are we good? I think so. Yeah? All right. Enjoy your weekend. It, I'm so excited. It's beautiful. The weather here is awesome. It's, 50, it's like 55 <laughs> and thundering storm. So. <laughs> Thunder, thundering storms. Thundering storms. Adios. Say bye. Bye.